Hello everybody and welcome back to another radiology tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing the skull base foramina. Now I know this is a topic that many people find confusing and difficult to understand. So I'm going to go through each foramen systematically one by one, showing you exactly what they look like on a CT scan, how you yourself can identify them on the scan, as well as mention some of the structures that pass through these foramina. Now the way I want to do it today is by following the cranial nerve, starting at cranial nerve 1, working our way down to cranial nerve 12, and then discussing some of the other foramina that don't have cranial nerves passing through them. So let's start with cranial nerve 1, our olfactory nerve. We can see here on this axial bone windowed CT, we're at the level of the skull base, and cranial nerve 1 is further up than that, superior to that, so we want to scroll superiorly. Let's start by looking at the frontal bone here with our frontal sinus and then work our way slowly inferiorly till we see this bony protuberance, which is the crista galli of the ethmoid bone. We can see it here. That's where our folk cerebri comes down and attaches. And that crista galli is just superior to the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. So the cribriform plate is that superior portion of the ethmoid bone. On top of that lies our olfactory bulb, which then sends nerve fibers down into the nasal passages. And we can see these nerve fibers go through these little olfactory foramina of the cribriform plate here and then retrieve sensory information which give us uh, our sense of smell. So that's our first foramina that we're going across, our olfactory foramina in the cribriform plate. Now let's move on to cranial nerve number two, which is our optic nerve. It's easy to find the optic nerve if we have a look here at the globe of the eye. We can see the op optic nerve coming out centrally. Let's scroll down so we cut that optic nerve in the transverse plane. We can see if we follow that optic nerve closely, it juts in medially like this, coming through the optic canal. Now there's many ways we can describe holes in the skull. We've got foramina, which are small holes, widths are equal to their breadths. Then we've got longer tubes, which we call canals here. We can see that this is a tube within the bone. And then we have irregular shapes that are normally formed by two bones coming together, making a space between the two of them. And we call those irregular shapes fissures. We've got foramina, canals, and fissures. So here we have our optic canal, which our optic nerve runs through. And laterally to that and running superiorly is our superior orbital fissure. Because of its irregular shape and the way it runs superiorly, as we scroll up, we will see the fissure here coming out laterally all the way up to the top. So we can follow that fissure all the way down. So we've done cranial nerve one and two. The superior orbital fissure has cranial nerve three, four, a part of cranial nerve five, and cranial nerve six. So three, the ocular motor nerve, four, the trochlea, and six, the abducent nerve, come through the superior orbital fissure. And then the superior portion of our trigeminal nerve, our fifth cranial nerve, comes through this fissure as well. So our fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve, has three branches the first of which, our ophthalmic division, comes through the superior orbital fissure, and our other two divisions will go through two separate fissures, which we will now try and find here. So now we need to scroll down slightly inferiorly. We can see our cella turcica here, our ethmoidal uh, sinuses anterior to that. We scroll down, scroll down. We can now see the sphenoidal sinus here. And as we scroll down, we can see here another foramen forming on either side of the sphenoid sinus. And this is what's known as the foramen rotundum. That's our second division of our trigeminal nerve, our uh, maxillary division. So we've got the first division going through the superior orbital fissure, the second division going through our foramen rotundum. Now what can be confusing with this is if we scroll down further, we can see another canal forming here, which you can often confuse with the foramen rotundum. The best way to differentiate these is to carry on scrolling down until you can see the pterygoid plates. We can see our medial and lateral pterygoid plates. And in between the pterygoid and this maxillary bone here is a space here. And this is something I hadn't heard of in medical school, but it clinically is so, so important because it connects so many different structures in the face. And this is what's called our pterygopalatine fossa. And that is a fossa that runs along the uh, vertical plane in the face. So as we come now superiorly, we can see our pterygopalatine fossa getting bigger. It's like an upside down pyramid. As we go higher, the fossa gets bigger. We keep scrolling up. We can see it gives away this first canal. This is what's called our vidian canal. And we'll look at later our carotid coming through here and sending the vidian artery through that canal. Now that's not our foramen rotundum. There's no nerve passing through that. We need to scroll more superiorly. And we can see the next defect in the bone here, that 
small circular uh, structure coming through the bone there is our foramen rotundum. And you'll see when we look at some coronal slices just now that that uh, foramen actually runs from anterior to posterior. It's not like a most of our foramina which are running from superior to inferior. So that's got our second division, our maxillary division of our trigeminal nerve. Now let's scroll down further and we will see another foramen forming posteriorly and laterally to that foramen rotundum. And this is what's known as our foramen ovale or foramen ovale. It's quite an easy structure to identify. You can see it's nice and big there. And that is the one that's got our last division, our mandibular division of our trigeminal nerve. So those three foramina, the superior orbital fissure, the foramen rotundum and the foramen ovale, they have our three divisions of our trigeminal nerve. Posterior to that and lateral to it is a very small foramen and it's very easy to identify because it's quite distinctive. It's a small uh, foramen in the uh, posterior and lateral portions of our sphenoid here. And this is known as the foramen spinosum. The foramen spinosum has no nerves passing through it. It has a vessel called the middle meningeal artery coming up into the brain. So we have our external carotid artery that gives off a maxillary artery. That maxillary artery then gives off our middle meningeal artery that comes on the interior surface of our temporal bone supplying blood to the meninges. And that's one of the vessels that if we have a fracture on the side of the skull can rupture and give us an extra dural hematoma. So in our sphenoid bone, we've got many foramina. We've got our superior orbital fissure, our foramen rotundum, our vidian canal, our foramen ovale, and our foramen spinosum. I just want to show you how you can see that on coronal section as well. These structures are quite complex. The bone itself, the sphenoid bone itself, is a complex bone. It's quite nice on coronal images. Let me now scroll um, through this coronal image so you can kind of get your bearings. I'm going to go now to the anterior portion of the patient. We can see the globes here. As I now head posteriorly, we can see our superior, middle, and inferior turbinates of our uh, nasal passages here. I'm going to keep scrolling posteriorly. And what you'll begin to notice, this is our sphenoid sinus. We can see here we've cut our foramen rotundum in the coronal plane. If I come anterior to that, we can see this is our pterygopalatine palatine fossa that gives off our foramen rotundum. And slightly inferior to that, we can see our vidian canal coming backwards. That's the one that if I scroll further back, you will see joins with our carotid canal coming back there. Okay, our vidian canal. Then the foramen ovale is quite easy to see on these because it forms a large defect here in the sphenoid bone. There it is on the left-hand side of the patient. A large defect like that, it's very easy. That's our foramen ovale, our third division of our trigeminal nerve. And as we scroll backwards, we can see that small hollow structure having our middle meningeal artery coming in here. That's our foramen spinosum. Okay, we're making our way through this. We've covered the sphenoid bone. Let's now go back into the temporal bone. I'm gonna, we're back into this thin slice bone window, axial CT. Just let it load up here. You can see our foramen rotundum. Coming back, foramen ovale, spinosum. Now, posterior to that, we can see here our carotid canal in the pietrous portion here of the temporal bone. And as we follow that carotid canal superiorly, we can see why it's called a canal. That carotid runs horizontally through the pietrous bone. And this whole section here is what's known as the carotid canal. It runs anterior medially and then terminates in what looks like a really oddly shaped space here and this is what's known as our foramen lacerum. It's filled with cartilage. The carotid doesn't actually run through the foramen. It runs superior to the foramen lacerum here and we will, if we follow that up we'll see the carotid runs up superiorly before diving uh, anteriorly past our or through our um, cavernous sinus before heading up into the brain into the forming the circle of Willis. So here's our carotid canal. No cranial nerve running through there. So we've covered cranial nerves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's look at cranial nerves 7 and 8, our vestibular cochlear nerve and our facial nerve. Facial nerve number 7, vestibular cochlear number 8. Now the way to find this is if we scroll inferiorly, find our petrous bone here. Now as we come up, we look at this petrous bone. We can see our external auditory canal, our tympanic membrane. What we want to do is find this internal acoustic canal. 
we can see it running really clearly here anteriorly you see this little clover leaf leaf shaped structure that's our um, cochlea and our vestibular system posteriorly so anteriorly and superiorly we have our facial nerve inferior to that we've got our cochlear section of our vestibular cochlear nerve and then posterior to that we have our vestibular section of our vestibular cochlear nerve so our vestibular cochlea terminates here but our facial nerve runs a bit of a long course you know our facial nerve is ending up in our parotid so how does it get there well let's look at this we've got our internal acoustic canal what we can do is if we scroll through here we'll see there's a small gap between our cochlea and our vestibular system and what our, our facial nerve does is it goes through that gap and then it goes posterior and inferior it dives its way down through the mastoid here so let's try and follow that down it comes round. we can see the facial nerve is coming in this gap here it's difficult to see on these slices what it does is as we go down 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 we can follow it here follow it here it will come out here between our mastoid and our styloid this is our stylomastoid Raymond, or now the facial nerve comes through there and then dives down to the parotid gland. So you can actually follow that facial nerve all the way and then we can follow it back up. Come in, oh, I've lost it there, come in and we should then bring it through between the cochlea and the vestibular system. Great. So we've done seven and eight. Let's go nine, 10, 11. Find our carotid canal, posterior to our carotid canal is our jugular foramen. So here we go, this carotid coming here in the vertical plane. Behind that is our jugular foramen, which has our jugular vein coming down. Our uh, sigmoid sinus draining blood away from the brain will then contribute blood into this jugular foramen. And we've got three cranial nerves running down there. We've got our glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve nine, our vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and then we've got our spinal accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11. You might be wondering how the spinal accessory nerve gets there. It's going out the brain, but we know that the, the spinal accessory has got cervical components, it's got components in the medulla. And so what happens is that uh, spinal accessory nerve actually comes up through the foramen magnum before heading across and down the jugular foramen. So it's the only nerve that enters the skull, comes in and then exits the skull again. Okay, and then moving on to our last cranial nerve, cranial nerve 12, our hypoglossal nerve. People can also find this quite difficult and the way that I uh, go about finding the hypoglossal canal is first by looking at the dense. So we're going to scroll all our way down. We can see our odontoid process here. So we know the bone surrounding that is our atlas, our C1. And our atlas then communicates with our occipital condyles. That's how our skull rests on the cervical spine is our atlas and occipital condyles coming together. So if we scroll superiorly, we know that these two processes here are our occipital condyles and our hypoglossal canal actually runs through those occipital condyles so we can see if we scroll 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 there's a foramen coming through or a canal our hypoglossal canal running through and down so our hypoglossal nerve goes through that hypoglossal canal it's just inferior to those occipital condyles and i'll show you now in um our coronal plane how we can go about detecting that and it's a really um, distinctive looking image as we come through our uh, occipital canals so let me let this uh, image load here we've actually got a CT scan of our cervical spine so you can see here we've got our odontoid process here is our uh, atlas our C1 and these communicating with the atlas is our um, occipital condyles and we can see what looks like an eagle here we've got the beak the head, wings coming out, and this proud chest coming here, and this canal that we can follow coming through here, that is our hypoglossal canal. Perfect, so we've got one more, the one that everyone remembers, one that I probably don't need to teach you about. Let's go back to our axial CT windows, and that's the big hole at the back of the skull, which is our foramen magnum. So I've already told you what comes through this frame and magnum. Now this is a really thin slice CT scan, so we're not getting the full ring of the frame and magnum, but we can see here's our um, occipital condyles. As we scroll upwards here, we can see the back of the frame and magnum. So everyone, no one forgets the medulla oblongata, the spinal cord going through the frame and magnum. We have our cerebellar tonsils just peeking through that frame and magnum, our vertebral arteries coming off, and I've already told you that our 
spinal accessory nerve will come up through that foramen magnum before passing anteriorly and going down the jugular foramen. So there we have it. We've gone a whistle-stop tour from the front of the skull all the way posteriorly following those cranial nerves. And if you'll humor me for a second, why don't we start at the top and quickly label all of those, show you that it's actually not that difficult to remember them. And the way to do this is to just repetition, going over it and over it, scanning through yourself, looking at these structures yourself. So we've got our olfactory foramina, we, we scroll down, our optic canal, our superior orbital fissure here. Then we come back, we've got our foramen rotundum, keep going, sorry, our foramen rotundum here, keep going down, we've got our foramen oval, foramen spinosum, our carotid canal, foramen lacerum, come down, we've got our jugular foramen here, we can see our internal acoustic canal, we can see our cochlear and vestibular system here, we get a we can follow that facial nerve all the way down like we did. The facial nerve will come between the mastoid and the styloid there. Again, we can work our way down, see our hypoglossal canal coming through there, and lastly, our foramen magnum. So I hope that's helped. It's a really quick tour. And what you can do is on these images, I've listed below me here, the Radiopedia links to these scans themselves. And I highly encourage you, type in that RID, the Radiopedia ID, it's a five digit number, load up the scan yourself and go through the scan, follow the foramina yourself. It's going to really cement that knowledge. So I hope that's helped. I hope you've learned something here today. I'll see you all in the next video. I'd love to hear your comments about what anatomy structures you would like to hear about next. Until next time, goodbye everybody.